these two molds say G576 and G577 in case you're wondering why we're doing two they are two consecutive numbers which usually means they're part of the same series or set where I can I am actually trying to do the series and collections together just so that we can have them all in the one video and we can have a nice little feature I have a little surprise hiding in the studio where I usually get these molds from so in case you're wondering why I didn't show you picking them out I'm, I'm keeping a secret I'm keeping a secret don't be scared that we're doing a few molds per video now they're ready to go so let's pour them up and see what's inside Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. All right, we have got two molds here. We have 576 and 577. Let's open up the small one first, which happens to be the first number anyway. That's right, yeah, 576 goes before 577. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Fun fact, I'm terrible with math. I used to be good at it back in the day, but I, ugh, my brain. <laughs> oh, they're little puppies. There's three little puppies here. They are each a different breed of dog. I'm not familiar with dog breeds. Actually, I know a lot of dog breeds, but I'm not familiar with these dog breeds. One of them looks like a cavoodle or maybe just a poodle in general in the center and it's just laying down. We've got one on the right, which looks like a Labrador and it's a tennis ball. It's like it's playing fetch and it's brought the ball back. And then we've got, it looks like a Scottish Terrier maybe. Oh, but that looks like a shoe <laughs> it's stealing a shoe it's chewing up a shoe oh my gosh why does shoe sound funny coming out of my mouth like i can really hear my accent on that word are scottish terriers known for chewing shoes I i'm gonna stop saying shoe i'm gonna call it footwear it's really bothering me how australian that's sounding i i wonder if this breed is notorious for stealing footwear <laughs> I'm wondering if these are more dogs because we all love dogs and more dogs would be great. So far, I'm not really sure what to do with them. They are very small. I feel like they could be cute little ornaments for the Christmas tree, but I feel like I've done that before and I feel like that's the easy route. I always talk about trying not to take the easy route and think of these new cool ideas to use for my pottery. Let's open it. I, it's narrower. Do I close my eyes? Do I look now? Can you see it? Do I look? Oh, kittens! Oh my gosh! We've got some cute little kitties! Got some puppies and some kitties! Oh my gosh, they're adorable! You know what? I don't think I'm a dog or a cat person. I think I'm both. Although, actually, I feel like I might be a bit of a cat person. I'm looking at the dogs who are asleep. They can't hear what I'm saying. I think I'm a cat person. But we got a cat last year and it has changed my life. And then my our cat sadly passed away because he was an old boy. We got a senior boy from the pound and we just fell in love with him. We gave him the best year we could and I we, we couldn't live without our cat. So we went and got a kitten because we wanted more time. And now we have two cats, two kittens. I, I've got two kittens inside and it's a lot. But I love them. I love them so much. I love these. I feel like it's embracing both my love for cats and dogs. Maybe more so cats. Do you know what's really funny? Is that the cats are just sitting all elegant and regal. And that's how I feel about cats. Is they're just so sophisticated. And the dogs are like being destructive. Got the shoe. They're chewing the shoe. The cats are just chilling. And that's how I feel <laughs> my pets is that maybe they're just being more like hidden about their destruction and i love that for the cats they are gorgeous the one thing i will comment on the cat is like everything i feel like cats get neglected in designs because this one is just the same cat but facing the other way i mean maybe that's a design choice maybe that's salt and pepper i don't know but the, the puppies, they're all different and they're all different breeds, whereas this is the same cat. There's different types of cats. We could have had a rag doll, but love it, love it regardless. I have a pretty cool idea on what I want to do with these, but I'm going to trim them up and get painting. 
So here is what the molds look like in case you were trying to find more information on them to source them for yourself. To be honest, these pieces are that weird size where they are a little too big for little attachments, but a little too small to sort of feature as a figurine piece. I actually have found something really cool, which I hope you will like. This piece, I am hoping to give it a really cute function at your desk or a windowsill or even just your bedside table. So I trim off the bases and I found this little alligator spring clip that are used for place card holders at weddings and things like that. I actually thought these would be an epic little photo holder and so I drilled a little hole into each of the pets to allow for this little clip to sit inside. Now you're probably wondering why is the hole a little bit big? Why am I making it super roomy? I made this hole a little wider to account for the shrinkage during the kiln firings because it goes through two significant shrinkage times through the bisque kiln and the glaze firing. So I need to make sure that they are big enough so that when I put the alligator clip in them they actually fit and aren't too small they will be glued in place so the glue should hopefully sort of like well and pull in that little hole allowing the alligator clip to just sit in so I want these to be these cute little photo pet pals as they are textured and small I wanted to keep the design something groovy that doesn't overwhelm their shape and take away from their cuteness I want to decorate them with a design that is how I would imagine a magic potion to look like like in a cartoon or something like when there's someone stirring that big potion pot. Now these are actually a little bit reminiscent of my space penguins which were so so popular so I kind of wanted to bring that back in its own way with these pet pals. The principle is really similar but this time it's different colors with more stars. I sponged on some color and then gently added a complementary or weird color on top of it and I just went with whatever I was feeling really. One did end up looking a bit moldy so I changed the color so it didn't look like literal mold was growing on. It was so weird because I think because of the texture, it looked like moldy bread. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't show you that one because it was it actually was a bit off footing. They then went through the bisque fire kiln and then I glazed them. I actually want to know, are you a cat or a dog person or are you both or none? I feel like it's a four way question. Like I think everyone gets caught up on cat or dog, but I feel like you can be both. But I also feel like you can be neither. Like it's okay to be neither and you're not strange for saying that because I feel like you get like looked at funny if you say you're neither. I mentioned my cat Matt before who sadly passed away a little bit before my Melbourne market because you saw my little kitten Muffin which we're calling Feral Cheryl at the time but her name is Muffin now and I wanted to share a nice little story about Max because we actually never intended to get a cat we actually had a lot of mice like we had a lot of mice hanging around we wanted we didn't want to like kill them we wanted them to, like get scared scared off so that they didn't come here so like let's get a cat and we didn't actually think anything of a cat because we've never actually been cat people. I want to tell you about this story about Maximus and why he became the reason why we are cat people. As soon as we brought Max home, it was like he knew where everything was. We were briefed at the pound that it would take him time to adjust. But literally as soon as we opened the carry crate, he was so smoochy, cuddly, and just like had to be on you all the time. He was so affectionate and he would grumble and make the cutest noises. A few weeks after having Max, we slowly noticed Noticed more and more people were walking past her house regularly. <laughs> Thought that's interesting. I wonder why all of a sudden our street is really popular for the daily walker. One day I was just sitting editing a YouTube actually, and an older woman walked past and she stopped at my fence. And I don't know if you all do this, but when someone like either stops or uses your driveway to turn around in, you're always alerted and you're kind of like looking around like what, what are they doing? So I'm looking at her through the window. She stops and puts both arms in the air and starts waving her hands up and down, like clapping them. To together like you know like this I, I'm trying to do the sound of it anyway she has this biggest smile on her face and I was like what the heck is she waving at like <laughs> Why is, she, why is she waving at our house? I walk into the next room and I see Max. He's found this little seat in the window and he's just sitting there with the grumpiest face. A week or so goes by and my neighbor comes up to me and says, your cat, every morning without fail, he sits in the window and says goodbye to my kids as they head off to school. My kids love your cat so much. We actually adopted one of our own and I could not believe it. This little guy had not only encouraged more people walking down our street just to see if he was sitting in the window but he encouraged our next door neighbors to also get a cat since getting the kittens they now sit in that spot as well the older lady came past one day and said
bed, I noticed your ginger cat, he's no longer there in the window. And we had to tell her. And in that moment, we told her that we'd gotten Muffin. She gave Muffin a cuddle and it was all happy days. And she was very sad. She was actually really sad that Max had passed away, like almost as sad as we were when he passed away. And so it was just nice that he sort of brought this community together of people walking past our house just to wave. <laughs> <laughs> our cat. Anyway, I actually want to know if you have a wonderful story about your pets. You know, they are such wonderful creatures and they do make our life so much brighter and better. I would love to know if you have a funny, cute, wonderful, hilarious story about your pets. Let me know in the comments. But let's get to the kill firing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! Look at all the colors, they're so great! Oh, they're wonderful! Oh, the luster! The luster's just gonna pop on those! Oh, I've, I'm gonna have to do it! I'm gonna have to add some little luster stars on them! It's just gonna take that design to its finished... Whoop, to its finished result! Oh wow! I actually feel like I could have done a pink set. I don't think I did a pink set. I just did oranges and yellows and bluey ones, but that's okay. I'm still really happy with them. I just am so surprised for once I didn't do pink. Oh, amazing. Oh, I'm just gonna look at them all day. I am going to grab them out and I think we will add the luster and then we'll add the finishing touches, which will be those little photo clips so that they can be used for a Polaroid portrait of your pet. They look so bright, colorful, and wonderful straight out of the kiln, but they are not finished yet. I am going to add stars to these. Instead of doing like an illustrative work like I did on the space penguins, I'm gonna add some gold luster stars and dots to make these sort of potion-y and fun and classic. And then once the luster firing is done, I mixed up a resin, which I then dipped the alligator clips into and then popped them into their holes. Now this resin is a really strong resin and it pretty much hardens as hard as glaze. Essentially, it is so strong. I was trying to pull the alligator clips out because I want to, I always want to test stuff before I send it out because I don't want you guys getting stuff broken because I haven't tested it and figured stuff out yet. And like I was pulling and yanking and grabbing it and making it hit stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I was like banging this thing around the studio, making sure that the clip did not come out and it was strong. I absolutely love how these turned out. They are such a groovy piece and I hope you like this idea because I definitely want to keep making these little photo clips for more pieces. Like so amazing how they turned out. I actually want to try other crafts as well. I am always trying to find new ways to do cool things with my pottery much greater than the pottery itself in a way. So like by turning things into key rings, by turning things into tea strainers, and now these photo clips. I would actually love to know if you have any cool ideas. I think I've asked this before, but I, you know, remind me. If you have any cool ideas uh, that you would like to see like this, maybe this has opened and sparked some ideas ideas for you that you would like to see uh, let me know in the comments because I am so open to trying them in the new year so I've got all the content already filmed for this year but I'm hoping to try some different crafts meddled in with my pottery to see how it feels and how I can collaborate all those ideas together let me know in the comments so to show their potential I actually got some of my old Polaroid pictures I actually don't have a Polaroid camera anymore I really want to get one I was looking them up but I also grabbed some little small business stickers and one from a photo booth as well because I feel like you could use these for so many little bits and pieces, maybe even like a calendar. Actually, that's a cool idea. I would love to do one of those like desktop calendars for the table, but I feel like just because of the clip, it just has so many uses. Like you can see, I've even got some little gum leaves in one. It just makes it so much more intentional and functional by having this clip in it. The other bonus of drilling the hole in it is it could be a really cool incense holder. There were were some that we did that actually have a bit too much of a smaller hole which I'll be taking to my next market as little incense holders but otherwise I am really obsessed with this idea I thought it was genius and I hope you like it too because I haven't really seen anything like this before well maybe well it's obvious that it's been done before but like I haven't really seen any other pottery artists that I love to follow do this so I feel I feel really proud of myself <laughs>
<laughs> but I'd love to know what colors your favorite, what you would display in them. And if you got the advent calendar and you've just unwrapped it, what you think of your piece and if you can spot it in the video. Thank you so much again for watching another video of mine. Here is a sneak peek for the next reveal. Thank you so much for watching.